Okay, so the question I've been asked recently on the uh, new Fujifilm EFX 500. By the way, I would normally never use a speed light sitting on my hot shoe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only time you see somebody doing that that knows what they're doing is if they're a photojournalist or a paparazzi because or like a press photographer, same thing. It is the worst lighting in the world. Um, on the EFX 500, like if you're shooting continuous high, like you're wanting to do some action shots in a club or scene, if you are set for TTL and continuous high, obviously your Fuji X-T2 can really crank them out, but not in TTL. Um with a continuous high setting on uh, your Fuji X-T2. The uh, frame rate is about, depends on what the flash power output is too. Right now I'm uh, set uh, for manual 250th. It even if doesn't matter if you're doing uh, high speed sync. However, in high speed sync, your flash will actually peter out sooner because high speed sync flash photography is pulsed lighting even if you can't see it. So each one of the consecutive shots is uh, fast pulsed light to cover uh, the first curtain and the second curtain rolling over um, the sensor. So you're limited to that, but there is a way around that. So let's first give you an example of a TTL flash photography with the EFX 500 and the Fuji X-T2. And you can get an idea. I'll put the uh, microphone up close to the camera so you can actually hear uh, the frame rate per second, which is roughly right around three. Basically about three frames per second. Now, if you have any skill at all, and it really doesn't take someone more than like three days to get used to, it's like, okay, I'm an ISO 400. You have a set uh, ISO that you're usually shooting at, 400, 800, depends on what your conditions are and the distance that you're shooting at. Obviously, the higher ISO, the less strain it's actually placing on your flash's capacitor. You know, if you have a low ISO, then it's going to need more of a charge to actually give a correct exposure uh, to the shot, if you're, especially if you're shooting further away. But you'll actually be able to natively intuit uh, what you'll need because 90% of professional photography and stroboscopic work and flash photography is done with uh, manual flash control. And a way around this, if you actually know the distance that you'll be shooting at, it's like, well, I'm going to be shooting some action about uh, 10 feet or so. I know that at my given ISO, I'm going to be shooting, and you have a plus or minus button, I'm going to say about 1, 250 one 256th uh, power output. So now I haven't changed anything. All I've done is gone from TTL to uh, manual. And now notice the difference. Obviously everything's mechanical shutter, of course. You can't do flash photography with electronic shutter. Notice the difference between before and I was shooting TTL at continuous high, and now in manual uh, in continuous high. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's like comparing a, a constipated turtle to a jackrabbit. Now, I calculated my distance accurately and my flash output accurately, and I have proper exposure. So, no big deal. You'll very, very quickly, if you experiment with it, and it's okay, just to like walk around the house and feels like, okay, my ISO 400, uh, what I'm going to be shooting at, a little bit of action, like uh, Angelina Jolie is going to be getting out of the car. I want to take a lot of really brrr, consecutive fast shots so I don't miss it. I'm about 12 feet away, you know, ISO 400, I'm going to hit the plus or minus button on my flash output, and I'm going to set it at whatever it is I determine the flash output needs to be, right? Okay. Wait for the action to come, because it's only going to be a brief moment where I'm going to want to catch a bunch of consecutive shots. And three shots per second is not enough in TTL. It is for a lot of stuff, but... Okay. I nailed it. So that's how you can actually get uh, that sort of uh, perfect exposure. Excellencia. However, unless it's photojournalism... Or, uh, <laughs> or, you know, uh, sorry. I don't care if you stick, uh, you know, the speed light up at the ceiling and uh, or you stick even a softbox on your speed light. Yeah, I've said it a thousand times before. The worst lighting in the world is uh, sitting here on top of your camera. It's like, that's a hot shoe. That's meant for speed light. No, what that really is is a connection port for your speed light and your camera to communicate. This is the most important accessory in the world for anybody that has a speed light. And most of you don't own one. It's called a TTL cable. 
By the way, uh, Fuji's, Fuji doesn't make a TTL cable, which they should. I've actually, one thing I've been bitching at Fuji about is make a damn TTL cable. Nikon doesn't even make their own. They outsource it to some company. Um, this is a Velo, V-E-L-O, TTL cable. It is for Canon, okay? Canon. You know, Canon, the company. The pinout configuration... Uh, for Fujifilm is the same as it is for Canon. In other words, kind of like, you know, the key, a certain key fits in a certain lock, so the key configuration, the pinout configuration for Fuji TTL flash photography is Canon. Yes, confirm that. You don't have to ask anybody else. I saw links at some boards. Like somebody said on YouTube that you used to use a Canon cable. It's that uh, tattooed dude. Is that really true? Like, yeah, it's true. I mean, what do you think I own this for? Yes. Like, do you really need to question, you know, what I've stated about that? Are you that untrustworthy? Oh, my God, that guy gave, told me to buy the wrong TTL cable. Really? Do you really think I'd do that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Anyway, bit of information. Useful information. Um, please check out the next video. I got a rant against the Fuji people. Not Fuji film, but the Fuji owners. People that own Fuji, I'm gonna rant against those people. Okay, bye.